Welcome back to part two, where we're going to discuss one of the most important theorems in statistics, the central limit theorem. So most population distributions actually aren't normal. So if I'm looking back at the original population, look at the um, very first slide in that first video. Uh, the If I sampled 100 people, I think it was about their salaries or something. The population distribution wasn't normal. It was absolutely skewed. So what is the shape of a sampling distribution if my population distribution isn't normal? So if we're not lucky enough to have a population distribution that was originally normal, what's the shape? Well, did you know that because of the central limit theorem, that as your sample size increases, guess what your shape of your sampling distribution is going to start modeling? It is going to start looking very normal. And this is true no matter what the shape of the original population distribution is. Even if it's crazy, funky, bimodal, quadruple modal, whatever is happening with the original population distribution, if your sample size gets large enough and still meets the 10% condition, if your sample size gets large enough, then it can um, normalize your sampling distribution's shape. So here's formal definition of a of the central limit theorem. Got some information on it. And I think I got one more slide to maybe uh, visually demonstrate that even with Okay, here we go. So we've got the Rice University sampling distribution applet. If you're curious and you want to look on about this, this is on page 457 to 458. So this is a super ugly, weird looking population distribution. This is the original distribution. But in this graph, I've got I sampled uh, n value of two. So it kind of got a little bit normaler looking, not normal, but normaler. Look what happens at n equals five. Whoa, hold the phones. That's starting to look like a symmetric, beautiful, normal distribution. n equals 10, n equals 25. Not only is it a normal distribution, but the variability is super low on that one. So even though you've got this crazy, strange, original population distribution, the central limit theorem states that as n gets larger, my sampling distribution must become more normal. So there's another wrap up on the normal or the large conditions for sample means. That is the, that's, that's dealing with our central limit theorem. And make sure that you know that central limit theorem also allows us to use normal probability calculations to answer other questions. So we, because we recognize that as our n size gets very large, that means our normal, our sampling distribution becomes normal. We get to use normal uh, formulas or calculations, prob probability calculations. All righty. So this little image, which weirdly doesn't have all of our dots. Uh, I don't know why, what happened here, but if I very quickly kind of drew in, there was a dot plot here at some point, and there's a bunch of dots. But anyway, made a mistake, didn't realize that the dots didn't come through. If you want to look at this image the way it truly should look, this is on page 460. But this is just a wrap-up of all of the facts that you should have understood about the sampling distribution of X bar. So if we're looking at quantitative data, then we can talk about the mean instead of categorical data where you would talk about proportions. So if we're looking at quantitative data, then you know that the sample mean X bar should be related to the mu value, the population mean, and your standard deviation as long as you meet the 10% condition, which means your sample size was no larger than one-tenth of the original population size. So your standard deviation can be calculated by taking standard deviation of your population divided by the square root of your sample size. A lot easier formulas to use than uh, the chaotic, chaotic standard deviation formulas and such and so forth. Also shows you that if a normal shape of the population distribution was normal, then so should the sampling distribution. And because of the central limit theorem, we know if the population distribution wasn't normal, the sampling uh, distribution of X bar would not be normal until your N value got large enough, your sample sizes got large enough. At this point, you need to answer a question on Moodle. The third video is not chapter 7.3, but a chapter seven overview.